welcome to one of my most requested videos and that is how I tab, annotate, highlight my books. And I've been putting this off for a long time but it's it's finally time. I've had many many requests and just to give you an idea like these are these are a few of the books that I've tabbed. Now I think I should start by saying I don't do this for every book. This is why I like to own books because then I can have all my like thoughts in one book. Often though I'm getting books from the library. I will sometimes tab library books but then remove it after obviously. I don't send that on with them. When I'm doing it for library books it's often because there's there's something from that book that I want to share in a video or something but normally when I do it in books that I own this is for me. So I think the thing that I do most with books is tab them. So there are some books Okay, we'll go with this Maisie Dobbs here. Some books that I have that I have solely tabbed them. There's no highlighting or annotating going on. This is just tabbed. I started doing this a number of years ago and I was trying to find books from when I started because the colors of the tabs do mean something to me, although it has changed over time. And I know back in the day, um, because I had a few different packages of tabs, I would change what they mean based on the book. And I couldn't find any where what I had done at the beginning was I would put the, each color and write what they meant. And unfortunately, I have not been able to find a book that I read long enough ago that has that. No, I lied. Actually, I found one in the Story Girl, but I just wrote down the colors and stuff. I didn't actually put it in here. Um, back here, green meant something about the character, purple meant a favorite quote, yellow was a question or something I didn't like, pink was relationship slash friendship, blue was plot or literary device, nice writing, etc. That's actually kind of close to what I do now. I read this in February 2019. So I don't think this was the first book that I was doing this to, but it was one of the first. And specifically this series or this collection of books I was tabbing, highlighting, and annotating to pass down to my kids. Okay, so what do I tab? I often tab something that jumps out at me. So sometimes, let's see here, like for instance with this book, sometimes I will use like the color red. That is something that I need to go back on. That's like a, that's an alert. The tabs that I usually use now don't have a red. They're orange, pink, green, and yellow, and blue. And I just get them from the dollar store. I get, I don't know, like 200 tabs for like a dollar or two. I would like some nicer colors, but that's what I've got to work with. So red was something that I, well, like, for instance, in this book, it's a biblical fiction book. I think this was usually something that's like, okay, maybe maybe that's a bit of a red flag. Maybe I need to go and like fact check this. Um, orange, there is some orange in this one. Probably won't have much orange in most of these. Is often something I didn't like. Either I didn't like how it was written. I didn't like that move by that character or something. So orange is generally something I don't like. With the exception of my uh, poetry collections, I tab things orange that are poems that I want to share with my kids because I'm not usually tabbing poems that I don't like. I'm only tabbing ones I like and orange is one of my son's favorite colors. So that's what that one is. Okay, so I'm tabbing things that I need to go back and look into a little bit more, tabbing things that I don't like. Um, back here when I was doing the Story Girl, things that were purple were a favorite of mine and there is quite a bit of purple in here. Those are either favorite lines, um, actions. <laughs> I just happened to turn to this one purple one. It says, I am very good friends with all cats. They are so sleek and comfortable and dignified and it is so easy to make them happy. So apparently that was a line that stuck out at me, uh, stuck, out, stuck out to me. Uh, but nowadays the tabs that I have aren't, they don't have any purple. So green is another one of my favorite colors. So now uh, green is, often indicates a favorite something. It really doesn't want to focus on these tabs. So just to give you a bit of an idea, there's 
lots of green ones there. So I have a system that's just worked for me. Uh, so green or purple are favorites. Yellow is like, I really like this, but it's not like favorite. It's like favorite, but not as much. If anybody knows Brian Regan. Um, yeah, so then that's yellow. Pink is often in uh, fiction books. It's either like a friendship or relationship. Some, something that I really like about a friendship. Uh, I've got some other books here that have some good friendship vibes. There's some good pink showing up, showing up in these books too. And then the last color is blue. Blue is usually It Made Me Cry. So I've got a couple of those in both of these books. These are probably both It Made Me Cry. Uh, or sometimes it is a, I did that for blue for tears. Sometimes it means beautiful writing, which I think is what I did in this one. This one was plot or literary device, nice writing, etc. So of course, Ella Montgomery gets some of that. If I had my Rilla of Ingleside book down here, there would be lots of blue because I just cried through that entire book. Some of the books that I tabbed a long time ago don't have really any kind of system to it, I don't think. Not that I remember anyway. I think it was just tabbing things that I highlighted that I like really wanted to jump out. Um, sometimes I don't tab books. For instance, with A Waking Wonder, for some reason I decided not to tab it, but I did highlight all the things. So highlights to me are like specific things that jump out at me. Once again, um, it's just, I usually use a tab to say like, go to this spot. It's easier to find it if I've tabbed it. Here, what I did when I was reading this, um, I did the unforgivable and I doggy-eared like so many of the pages. There's a lot of doggy ears. I'm sorry to those who don't like doggy ears. So that was when I was highlighting and something really stuck out at me, but it's like, I need to go back and re-look at this. So I would doggy ear the pages. I know, taboo. But highlighting, my highlights don't usually follow any kind of system. I like multiple colors usually when I'm highlighting. So it's like, if I haven't used this one for a while, I'll do that. My favorite highlighters are more in the pastel theme. I don't really like the really bright highlighters, although I do use those at times. One thing that I've done for a couple different books, I think, actually I can only remember two. Um, this is one of them. I went through and I highlighted things in one color the first time that I read it. And then the next time that I read it, I went through and I highlighted or underlined it in another color. And I know this book specifically. I had a friend that borrowed it and she used a different color and did some highlighting as well, which I think is pretty cool. I recently went and watched um, Murphy Napier had a video about how she highlights and she annotates her books. And it was really interesting to hear about how she passes on her book to her friend with all her notes in it and how they can kind of like, I don't know, it, I guess it enriches the experience. Now annotating. I do not do this a ton. After watching Murphy's video, whenever she posted that, like a month ago, I it made me want to annotate more, but I do have a bit of a fear of marking up all my books that much. So generally books that I mark up are like classics or nonfiction. Um, and then some of these, where'd they go? Or like books by a favorite author that I know I'm going to keep, but highlighting, annotating can get a little tricky, but I generally do buy my books fairly cheap. So if I want to highlight things and annotate them and don't feel like I can pass them on, I could always go put them in a little free library. I mean, if, if people don't care about that, then they can get the book anyway and have the highlights and annotations. Uh, so annotating, I don't do a ton, want to get better at, but I don't even know what this says. Okay, here's, here's, a, here's a quote marked it in purple, and then I annotated it. It says, he can't do anything to us, you know, said the story girl. He may be rude, but that won't hurt anyone but himself. And then I have, ooh, good one there. So I did go through and annotate a decent amount of this. Some of it's just like, ugh. Some of it's yes. And a few different things. 
I do want to go through my, all my Tundra editions and do this for my kids. I just think it would be kind of cool to pass on and I kind of want to start doing this more with books, like I said. I want to put my reactions on the page and maybe my predictions on the page. I think that could be fun. I just, there's a little bit of a like bump that I have to go over in order to do that. Oh, and then what I usually do is my little, and which is, oh, I do have some here. So this is what my little tabs look like. They're actually twice as big. They have the same colors duplicated. I just cut it in half and then I use this as my bookmark. So I always have the tabs with me. Um, for most books, that's what I use for a bookmark. And then where I usually read, I have like a set of highlighters in case I want to highlight anything. And yeah, that's a little look into like how I very unofficially tab my books, highlight them, tiny little bit of annotations. Is there more to this that you guys would like explored? Do you guys highlight, tab, annotate? I'm curious to hear if you have any kind of system or how you do it or why you do or why you don't. I just think this is a fun conversation to have. So thanks for being here guys and I will see you again tomorrow.